welcome to this YouTube channel. We are going to discuss a small topic related to developmental biology that is types of eggs or classification of eggs. Let's get started. Friends, the contents of today's topic are introduction, classification of eggs on the basis of amount of yolk, classification of eggs on the basis of distribution of yolk, classification of eggs on the basis of the developmental pattern, the mosaic eggs, the regulative eggs, the cladoic, non-cladoic, all these uh, contents we are going to discuss in today's topic. Friends, you are all knowing about the, uh, the types of eggs. Egg is the female gamete. Egg is called organic pot in which the zygote is formed, in which the entire embryonic development occurs. For the embryonic development and for the cell division process and for the synthesis of proteins, all those materials that are needed are already kept inside the egg. Number of mRNA molecules, number of ribosomes and proteins, what are essential for the future development of egg are already placed by its mother either by the absorption or by the synthesis, the egg itself synthesizes or absorbs all these materials. These materials are needed for further development. That is the greatness of egg. You may be knowing that the union of sperm and egg forms the zygote. But what is the contribution of sperm? The contribution of sperm is only the genetic material. Very little amount of cytoplasm a very very little amount of uh, cell organelles are added to the uh, uh, egg cytoplasm. Most of the cytoplasm is of egg only. So that's why whatever materials that are needed for the further development are already built in, are already stored in, in the egg. So that is the very very important uh, point related to the egg. Based on the eggs, Animals are broadly categorized into two types. The animals which are laying the eggs outside and the development occurs outside are called oviparous animals. Oviparous animals lay the eggs. So, uh, ova are formed in all animals which are performing sexual reproduction, but the fertilized eggs are laid by the female individual outside the body. So, such organisms or such animals are called oviparous organisms or oviparous animals. Most of the invertebrates lay eggs outside. Fishes, very rarely only contractist fishes, some contractist fishes can develop the uh, embryos inside, but most of the fishes lay the eggs outside. They are oviparous. Reptiles lay very big egg, cladoic egg. They are covered with the shells. They are oviparous. And of, of course, all birds are oviparous in nature. They lay the eggs. Viviparous animals are those animals which develop the uh, eggs, egg, egg embryonic development inside the mother female reproductive system. In, in the case of uh, mammals, intrauterine development is there during the gestation period and in some scorpions. So, half of the development occurs, they are ovo viviparous. And in the case of uh, sharks, so in the case of certain amphibians also. A part of the development occurs inside the mother also. But mammals, in mammals, the very important and speciality of mammals, uh, except prototherians, is that the intrauterine development occurs. The entire embryonic development occurs within the mother reproductive system, especially in uterus. Whatever materials are needed for the development are supplied by uh, mother itself. Okay, so based on egg. Animals are classified into oviparous, viviparous. Okay, but you you have to have one concept that eggs are formed in all animals, but viviparous animals release the egg within their body in the coelom. Oviparous animals, oviparous animals, they lay eggs outside. So before fertilization, they may be laying the eggs outside, or when internal fertilization occurs, as in the case of reptiles and birds. After the fertilization, fertilized eggs will be laid outside. So that is a very important thing. Ova are formed in all sexually reproducing animals by females. Okay. The largest egg, whenever we heard this, uh, 
will come to uh, a bird a bird comes in our mind that is ostrich the camel bird ostrich whose egg is very very large and very big weighing about one and a half kg having the amount of uh, the what is that called yolk or the material equal to the 20 chick eggs so so this is the largest cell of course uh, in the animal kingdom and this is the largest egg that is laid outside having the dimension of 17.8 centimeters into 14 centimeters but friends if uh, which is the largest egg that is formed if uh, a point comes it is the whale shark whale shark egg is further larger 13 into 14 into 9 centimeters but it is not released outside so this this ovum this ovum is liberated within the mother itself okay the whale shark whale shark is the largest one so it is there within the body okay so dinosaurs perhaps laid larger very larger eggs it is very uh, what is that called uh, strange to even imagine the size of the eggs of very huge dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex okay sea urchin egg is measuring about 75 microns and a human egg is only 0.1 millimeter in size the smallest bird mainly suga helene this is bee hummingbird egg is only a very very little egg you can see that it is a half a gram in weight insects and many invertebrates lay much smaller eggs to these what we have discussed now so oh, one of the very important things that we need to discuss about the morphology of eggs is that the egg is polarized different poles are there for egg so if you see a frog's egg fertilized egg you will you will get uh, some part of the egg is black in color and some part is white in color black and black and white uh, coloration you will see of course black color is colorless actually so the egg of uh, any animal is actually polarized one egg is consisting of the nucleus and some amount of cytoplasm and that part of the egg that is called that pole of the egg is called animal pole the other pole where uh, yolk material got concentrated is called a vegetal pole whenever you see any egg with some amount of yolk you will find there are two poles the animal pole where active cytoplasm is there nucleus is concentrated and the vegetal pole the vegetal pole where much of the yolk got uh, stored and then the cytoplasm is very very inactive even the cell divisions also occur in this pole very very slowly and in the animal pole the cell divisions occur after the fertilization cleavages the cleavages occur very rapidly fast that's why the cells are more in number with a small size but the yolk material what is concentrated in the vegetal pole is uh, inhibitor of the cell division that's why cell divisions occur very slowly that's why we will see small number of the cells very less and the size of the cells is very more very more size okay right so eggs are if uh, yolk is there eggs are classified eggs are polarized animal pole and vegetal pole depending upon the location of uh, nucleus animal pole the concentration of yolk the vegetal pole as i mentioned cytoplasm is more active in animal pole that contains nucleus but cytoplasm is very less active in vegetal pole because that contains the reserve food material that is called yolk okay around the egg there are several protective membranes several protective membranes are there some <coughs> uh, vital line spaces are there and then jelly like material is there a zona pellucida corona radiata uh, discuss prolegeras all they are there but uh, after the release of the ovum uh, after ovulation you will find what is that a vital line membrane and then corona radiata and zona pellucida and these membranes give protection to the egg and they also have certain molecular uh, signals to catch the sperm of the same species okay some molecular signals are there and some protective sheets are there and uh, <coughs> a vital line membrane and jelly like layers are there as primary layers and secondary many many secondary layers are there around the egg 
Outermost secondary layer is very very hard in birds and reptiles and that is made up of calcium and that is called a very hard shell in the cladoid yax. Friends, let us come to our topic that is classification of yax. Classification of yax is done on three different ways. One is on the basis of the amount of yolk and the second one is on the basis of the distribution of yolk and the third one is on the basis of how the developmental pattern occurs after the fertilization how the development goes on depending upon these three points eggs are classified into different types okay so let us come to the first one that is classification of eggs on the basis of amount of yolk on the basis of amount of yolk there are four types of eggs elicital egg microlicital egg mesolicital egg and macrolicital or megalicital egg okay here lecithal means yolk a means very less micro means very small and uh, uh, meso means moderate and macro or mega means very large amount let us see one by one friends you just observe this egg this egg is belonging to mammals viviparous mammals where egg is there and the centrally located nucleus is there and cytoplasm is there that's all yolk amount is very very little or almost all absent there is no yolk and such an egg where yolk is completely absent is called a lecithal egg okay if uh, yolk what is the importance of yolk yolk is as i mentioned it is the reserve food for the development process when it is developing when egg is developing it needs a lot of food material so food is stored in yolk if yolk is very very less or totally absent it indicates that someone is going to supply the uh, food material during development so as the year lecithal eggs are found in viviparous mammals except protozoarians all mammals are viviparous where mother supplies all the nutrients for the intrauterine development or for the gestation period that's why yolk is almost all absent okay so eggs of eutherian mammals a lecithal egg meaning there is no yolk yolk is not present all yolk may be present very very little next let us see micro lecithal eggs micro lecithal eggs consists very small amounts of yolk very small amount of yolk okay example amphioxus and certain tunicates you can see here this is the egg and surrounding the egg as i mentioned earlier there is what is that zona pellucida corona radiata and several other layers are also present in addition to these now coming to the point how amount of how much of uh, yolk is there here yolk is very very less okay so uh, yolk has a small or negligible amount of yolk and this is called a micro lecithal yolk and balinski and romer called these yolks as oligolecithal yolks okay and uh, example amphioxus tunicates let's see miso lecithal yolk miso means moderate lecithal means yolk so this egg is having moderate amounts of yolk you take for example the african bullfrog xenopus whose eggs are having some some amount of yolk material for their development and this small amounts of yolk moderate amount of yolk material is useful as the reserve food of the embryonic development till the larva forms once the larva tadpole is formed the tadpole itself can uh, collect the food material so up to the formation of tadpole the egg needs at least some amount of yolk and that is present so when egg is having moderate amount of yolk such egg is called mesolecithal egg example dipnoe fishes amphibians uh, and cyclostomes petromyzon like that okay macrolecithal egg macro meaning very large amount mega means very large so these eggs are having large amount of yolk they are also called polylecithal different varieties of uh, yolk may be there white yellow like that so macrolecithal egg or megalecithal egg is a very very important uh, uh, um, uh, what is that called <clears throat> thing in the developmental process where the yolk is going to give all those necessary materials for the complete development of embryo you take for example the chick development during chick development for all the 20 days or 21 days 
whatever food materials are needed will come from the yolk that, are, that is already packed in the egg. So that's why large amount of yolk material is there. So such eggs which we see in reptiles, in birds and in egg laying mammals that be the platypus, echidna, these are called egg laying mammals and they are also laying very huge uh, yolk storing eggs. These are called macro lecithal egg, otherwise called mega lecithal egg. So because uh, yolk is there in large amounts, the nucleus and cytoplasm is pushed towards one pole. As the nucleus and cytoplasm is pushed towards one pole and surrounding uh, what is that called uh, yolk, uh, there is a very small layer of uh, 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 cytoplasm is present. So uh, that is why we will very clearly see here the two poles, the animal pole and the vegetal pole. And during the development, if you see this egg, if you see the structure of egg, and during the development, this is developing embryo, and it is having all the yolk material that is stored in several layers, where the dark color indicates yellow yolk and the light color indicates white yolk, and different membranes are also there. Albumin is also stored here, albumin, outer albumin, this is uh, inner albumin, and this is uh, this is white, uh, egg white, and this is egg yellow. Okay, latebra, shell, shell membrane, chalaja, and several other structures are there. And egg, shelled egg is designed in such a way that there is uh, a, a mechanism or this there is, um, what is that called, a um, pathway or there is a provision of entry of gases also. So in a very important space called air space and from here the respiration, respiratory gases will be exchanging. So this is the diagram of ecledoic egg. Almost all uh, yeah, reptile eggs and bird eggs and prototherian eggs which are developing on land. That's the very important criterion here. For the development on land, what is needed? A very hard shell is needed. Okay. So, for a different phenomena, so these are called megalistal eggs. The meaning of the megalistal egg is that having large amounts of yolk. Example, birds, reptiles and prototherians. Okay, that is the first way of classification. Let's see the second way of classification. This classification is based on the distribution of yolk. How is the yolk distributed? Is the yolk distributed evenly all the parts of the egg? that is isolestal or homolestal or if uh, the yolk is concentrated only at one pole that is called telolecithal or if yolk is present at the center and the uh, surrounding cytoplasm is there and uh, that is called centrolestal egg. Let's see one by one. Okay friends you see isolestal egg. Here small amounts of yolk is there but yolk is distributed equally in all parts of the egg. In all parts of the cytoplasm yolk is equally distributed. That's why all microlistal eggs are said to be homolistal eggs. All microlistal eggs said to be homolistal or isolistal eggs because the yolk what is present is equally distributed in all parts of egg. Example, amphioxus and tunicates. So one point we need to understand that all microlistal are having yolk is present very very small and that yolk is equally distributed. Example, echinoderms, amphioxus, and mammals. Mammalian eggs are considered as microlistal or elicital. Right. So, telolistal egg. Telo, telo means tail. Lecithal means uh, yolk. Telolistal by meaning, we understood, we understand that egg is concentrated towards one end. So, you see the diagram here. So this is the telolestal egg and yolk is present at one side and cytoplasm is pushed towards one pole where nucleus is also there. A small layer of cytoplasm is there around the egg and this pole is called vegetal pole and this is called animal pole. So in telolestal egg, the egg may be having moderate or large amounts of yolk. Egg, uh, yolk may be moderate amounts as we see in the mesolestal eggs or large amounts what we see in the megalistal eggs. But yolk is not equally distributed, not uniformly distributed. Yolk is concentrated only towards uh, what is that called vegetal pole. Depending upon what is that called, the place where the yolk is actually concentrated, 
the telolecithal eggs are further classified into slightly telolecithal, moderately telolecithal, extremely telolecithal. What do you mean by slightly telolecithal? So, slightly telolecithal means the entire yolk what is present, of course, in the mesolecithal yolk has not completely concentrated on vegetal pore. So, slightly leaving some place in the uh, animal pole. It is, it is moving towards vegetal pole. That's why it is called slightly telolecithal. Moderately telolecithal eggs, where the yolk mood are concentrated more towards uh, vegetal pole. Okay. Extremely telolecithal, heavy deposition, heavy deposition of yolk is there, and the ooplosum and the nucleus almost all displaced to animal pole. Okay. Depending upon the amount of yolk, telolecithal X, if amount of yolk is very less, it is called slightly telolecithal because it has not completely gone towards vegetal pole. If amount is moderate, then some, some more movement towards telolecithal area, some, some more movement towards vegetal pole area. If huge and heavy amount of yolk is there, then uh, it will concentrate on vegetal pole and pushing the nucleus and cytoplasm towards the other pole. So, on the basis of the amount of yolk what is present, the telolecithal are three types. So, slightly telolecithal, moderately telolecithal, extremely telolecithal. Okay. Slightly telolecithal example fishes, moderately telolecithal example amphibians, and extremely telolecithal example, uh, what is that, reptiles and birds, and also those uh, mammals which are laying eggs. One more variety is there very interesting that is central esthen egg where nucleus is situated in the center and surrounding the nucleus there is yolk and surrounding the yolk there is cytoplasm. Okay, and you see here so yolk is there exactly in the center around the nucleus and surrounding it is a cytoplasm. Egg has a large amount of yolk, no doubt, polylecithal, and the nucleus lies at the geometrical center and yolk mass is a central and is surrounded by a small layer of cytoplasm, here yes, cytoplasm, yolk mass is in the central region, nucleus is in the geometric, uh, geometric center, okay. Fine threads are also there extending from, you see the peripheral layer to the central zone, so it will support and uh, it will fix the position of the yolk. And eggs of many arthropods and ciliated are of these kinds, so arthropods especially insects, Insects eggs or central esthen eggs. Okay. Let's see the third classification, the classification of eggs on the basis of developmental pattern. The, there, there are two types of developments in protostomes and in deuterostomes. The development here um, uh, occurs on the basis of determination. Determination is a process in which the cells which are formed after the cleavages will determine themselves to form a particular organ in the adult. So that you can draw the fate maps. This portion of egg is going to develop head. This portion of egg is going to develop tail. And this is going to develop heart. This is going to develop kidney. So like that the cells of cleavages take the early determination. Early determination. So, such kind of cleavages are called determinative cleavages and such kind of development is called determinative development and the eggs which are performing such a development are called mosaic eggs or determinative eggs. And the other case where cleavages occur and many cells are formed but the cells do not get the determination at an early stage. Cells definitely get the determination but later stages. There are some advantages and disadvantages. Let's see what is the exact thing about the mosaic X and regulatory X. So the, during uh, the mosaic X develop on the basis of developmental potentials. Developmental potentials means uh, number of cells are there. What is the potentiality of one cell? What is it going to form in future? That is called developmental potential. Okay. So, is it going to develop the head or is it going to develop some? So, like that, based on the developmental potential, so eggs are classified into two types. Okay. 
Now, in the mosaic EX, which are there in protostomes, okay, in the mosaic EX, all the portions of the EX, different portion of the EX, gets determined, predetermined to form a particular structure in the adult. Say this portion is going to develop that, that portion is going. So, predetermination occurs in the, diff in the different region of the egg. Okay. Whatever cell is located in that particular area of the egg, that cell is going to develop a particular organ. This is called the developmental potentialities of different portions of the eggs. Okay. The disadvantage of this one is, the disadvantage of this is, if a small portion of the egg is damaged or removed, okay, whatever portion got damaged or removed is not going to develop that particular organ in the future. So the embryos are formed defective to that particular organ. Okay, the other cells of the embryo or the other portions of the embryo are not going to compensate the loss. If something is lost, everything is lost in the adult. That means that particular tissue is lost in the adult. So such egg where you, you will find the mosaic pictures, head picture like that, tail picture. So different portions of egg are going to form different organs in the adult. So such a classification is called mosaic egg. Okay. So when a portion is damaged, it leads to the formation of defective embryo because the lost part cannot be compensated. Hence, these are called mosaic eggs. If you see the fate maps, if you see the fate maps, the egg is having different zones, different portions. Okay. So, each portion is separate from the other. So, that's why each is giving a different color. So, it looks like a mosaic picture. Right. So, hence, it is. these are called mosaic eggs. Example, protostomians, determinative cleavages, especially, annelids, mollusks, and acidians, mosaic eggs. Regulative X, on contrary to the first one, here the developmental potentialities are not predetermined in the areas of the egg. Okay, all the areas what are there, all the areas are not have taken any determination to form a particular organ in the adult. Okay, if any part of the embryo is lost, the lost part can be compensated because determination has not occurred. Determination will occur at later stages. Uh, egg is not, the egg areas are not determined. Once the cleavages are formed and once many cells are developed, at the later stages of the cleavages, okay, determination occurs. In the early stages, if any cell is lost, this cell will, the role of this cell will be taken by the other cell. That is why if a small part is lost, embryo develops normally. Defective embryos will never be formed because the lost part will be compensated. Okay. Embryo compensates the lost portion. Okay. Removal of a small portion of the egg or removal of one or two blastomeres will not affect the development. Why? Because the lost part is compensated. The lost parts are not determined. Okay. In earlier case, if any part is lost, Determination of that particular part is also lost. Here, as there is no determination, is there not? So, if any part is lost, embryo can regulate other cells to become these parts. This is called compensation. On the basis of presence of cell, these regulative embryos or the regulative eggs, we can say, on the basis of presence of a shell, these are two types. Cladoic eggs, non-cladoic eggs. Cladoic eggs are those eggs which are having a very, very hard shell. This shell is protecting the embryo uh, from the external surroundings, from the dry atmosphere or, or from the other, other, other dangerous things. So, on the basis of the shell, outermost shell, this, this egg is called cladoic egg if shell is present. Okay? It is permeable to gases. And yolk, salts and water are present in large amount because for the development, lot of time is needed. So, the shell will give protection and proper shape and it, it, some aeration occurs. So, respiratory gases will be exchanged. So, almost all uh, very good protection is there and this is an advantage. 
and this is an adapter adaptation for the land vertebrates friends why amphibians could not survive and complete their life cycle on land they could not complete they will not complete their life cycle on land because when they lay eggs on land eggs will get dried up development will be ceased okay so if the eggs are surrounded by a shell okay that is preventing any desiccation that is preventing any uh, loss of water then the egg development goes on that's why amphibians they don't have the shell so they, their their expansion did not occur and presence of shelled egg cleidoid eggs is an adaptation for land vertebrates like uh, reptiles waves and of course those uh, egg laying mammals okay non cleidoid egg is uh, that egg which is having everything regulative properties if a portion is lost the lost portion will be com compensated by other area regulated uh, but shell is absent as the shell is absent it is the regulative but non cleidoid uh, for example mammalian uh, eggs we are all vivi pairs so our mother lays eggs but egg doesn't have any shell but it is having the property of uh, regulating the lost part okay regulating the developmental pattern the developmental pattern can be regulated okay there are developmental potentials can be regulated so vivi pairs mammals have what is that regulative embryos but non cleidoid and vivi pairs uh, animals which lay eggs in water also in certain cases okay let's compare the different types of uh, various types of eggs and how are they classified in one chart so based on the yolk amount of yolk elicital microlicital mesolicital macrolicital elicital eutherian mammals microlicital echinoderms eurocordates amphioxus mesolicital amphibian diploid petromyzon macrolicital reptile birds and monotremes monotremes means prototherians on the basis of distribution isolicital nothing but microlicital telolicital concentrated at one site amount of yolk slightly telolicital moderately telolicital extremely telolicital based on the position of the yolk on the basis of developmental pattern mosaic x mosaic x means egg areas of egg determined to form a particular organ in the adult regulative x the mosaic x example protostomes regulative x in this the developmental potentials will be regulated and if any part is lost the function of the lost part can be done by other cell can be taken over by the cell and on the basis of presence of shell these are called cleidoic x reptiles and birds and even shell is absent in the case of eutherian mammals uh, they are called non cleidoic x friends uh, with this i think you might have uh, understood about various types of x or the procedure of classification of ex thank you thank you for watching this video